Hi everybody, here's Christian. And this is our Pico 8 Hero tutorial where we do usually, usually, we uh, do our breakout clone. But today I decided to do a small diversion, a small, um, how do you call it? Um, kind of like a side quest, so to speak. We're gonna talk about objects because I figured something that we absolutely have to do and something that we can't get around is you, us using objects. Initially, I didn't want to do those in this first tutorial series, um, but I realized that I just can't get around this. So what are objects? You might have heard about things that are, that you know, like object-oriented programming or classes, you know, stuff like that. You know, these things um, often sound scary and like very complicated, you know, very like, you know, uh, um, computer engineering kind of stuff. But actually, what objects are trying to accomplish is something similar to what we already did before. We already had, you might remember, we already had stuff like um, um, array, right? An array was a list of variables. This is how you start an array, right? And then with an array, um, you could go you could have like multiple elements in an array. I mean, you could go like, you know, element number one would be uh, 200, whatever. It's like, you know, you could like count things. You could, um, the, generally the idea of an array is I'm gonna take multiple variables, four variables in our case, which store four different values. I'm gonna take those four variables and I'm going to combine them into one thing, into one variable that contains those those four other variables. That's kind of like, kind of like a like a meta variable. And so now we're going to talk about objects, which is kind of doing a very similar thing, or maybe you could say the very same thing. An object is basically like a, a kind of like a compound variable. It's a variable that consists of smaller variables, so to speak, of, of like simpler variables and describes a thing. And that's kind of like maybe something that might be a bit um, misleading because when you hear object, you think about maybe something that's on the screen, something that's actually there, maybe something you can click on, you know, an object. And in many cases, it's like, for example, if we go to Unity or if you do deal with something like Visual Basic, you know, like those kind of envir environment environments, these things that you can you can create things in those in those environments on the screen and you click on them and get the properties and stuff like that. And so these are objects in those environments. But that doesn't mean that every object is that kind of thing. Like objects can be something that's like abstract and invisible and just somewhere in, in the computer, just like a variable, is something that's not necessarily something that's like printed on the actual screen. And you know, that kind of sounds maybe like very complicated, but let me give you like a sim simple example. There might be like a, um, I think there's like a very nice analogy that kind of makes sense, I think, for everybody, at least for everybody who is familiar with the concept of a role playing game. Role playing game, pen and paper role playing game. So when you sit with your buddies, you know, like in the Stranger Things, you sit with your buddies at a table and everybody pretends to be an elf or a dwarf or whatever. And then when you play those games, usually you would have a character sheet, which is kind of like a list of ver various like properties and things about your character, various information about your character. And that character sheet that you could say is an object. Let me show you what I mean. So let me say, I'm gonna go like Frodo, right? Frodo, and I mentioned, the reason, the one reason why I also mentioned um, arrays is because especially Pico 8, other programming language, not so much, but Pico 8 in specifically, actually makes really no distinction between objects and, and arrays. Like they treat it at the, at the beginning, you create them in a, in, a, in, a, in the same way. So this is, I'm gonna create an object called Frodo. This is now an object. It is also an array, so I could continue making it an, an array, but I will treat it as an object. So Frodo has a name. 
and and we call him a Frodo. Uh, what is his last name, by the way? Let me look this up real quick. Uh, this is embarrassing. I, I, I read it in German, and he, I think he has a slightly different name in German. I'm not sure. Frodo B Baggins, Baggins, yes, Baggins. Okay, so as you can see, I created an object, an empty object, and I gave this object a property called name. I'm going to continue. I'm going to say he has HP, he has health points, because, you know, he is a, he's an RPG character. He has 100 HP. Um, he has MP. He's a bit of a magical character. He maybe has like 10 MP. And so forth. And then, you know, you can also give him, like, he has strength, STR. Maybe he has, I don't know, he's not really strong, right? So I, I'm guessing it's from 0 to, to 10. So let's say he has strength 2. He is not a very strong character. Um, but maybe he, wisdom, he's, he's pretty, I mean, he's not wise, but he's pretty smart. So let's go, let's go with 7 or something, you know, and so forth, right? So you can see the the concept here where this becomes like a compound variable probably becomes like a compound variable and it has kind of like sub variables there is this variable called name a variable called hp a variable called m called mp strength wisdom you can like keep on attaching more variables to an object and to create like this like a like a little you know clump of variables and that's what an object is and just basically a clump of variables at its core, at its core, that's what an object is. There is some more crazy stuff you do later on with variables, uh, with objects, but actually that's not really well implemented in Pico and we're not going to deal with this. If you are like, you know, really anal, uh, you know, um, computer science person, then this is technically not an object, it's a struct. But to me, like, structs are the cool objects anyway. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so this is basically what, what an object is. Um, so you can create like, of course, now Moodle characters, of course, as well. You can give all of them these, these, um, these the same qualities. And a very important thing is like the, how you write this out, like this dot. So you always have like an object dot property, where the object is basically the name of the object and then dot, specifies that now we're talking about in a property of that object and then the property is the name of the variable that is kind of like inside this object so so yeah so for example now you can you can you can go through this object and go like okay let's print the name so you, you treat this as as you would treat any variable frodo.name and you can um, print Let's call, call print line. Is it print line? No, it's there is no print line. This is a different programming language, uh, and so forth in HP and MP. And I'm going to run this. You can see for the baggins, so whatever that. So these are generally normal um, variables. Uh, and so the way we're going to use this, of course, usually this you wouldn't just have like one Frodo, right? You would like this would be a maybe a party of characters. So you can combine the two concepts. There's no reason why you can combine the two concepts of an array and a concept of an object. In fact, that's often what you do. So you would have something like party. This is our party of characters. And like this. And then we have, we're have we gonna create a Frodo. And we're gonna go party dot, uh, party square brackets. Um, one equals Frodo, right? And then, you know, you could have like Bilbo and you can have uh, other characters as well and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to just, just, just so maybe it's, it's more clear. I'm going to create a second character and it's going to be Gandalf. So Gandalf, I don't, does ha Gandalf have a second name? I guess Gandalf the Grey is his name. Uh, 
Um, his magic power is definitely 9001 because it's over 9000. Slightly, maybe slightly less HP. Let's give him 90. He's, a, he's an old man. Definitely less strength, but wisdom is definitely at 10. And then, of course, you can put Gandalf into this party. Right? And then you can go, you know, um, you could, for example, now iterate through the party and print all of the names of all your characters in the party. Let's do that. Um, <laughs> how do four next loops work in this again? I always forget the four next loops. Let me let me look this up real quick. Um, there we go. Uh -huh. Okay. Again, I have to point it out. I guess I have to point it out in each, each episode. This is the cheat sheet I'm using. It's down in the comment section. You can um, you can download it yourself, and it always helps me out because as, I can, as you can see, I'm a lazy person and I don't remember any of those things. So you know, you can have now party I, and now you can do dot name. And if you print this. Can run this. We have Proto and Gandalf in our in our team. Cool. Cool. Actually, let's do this like a hashtag. Where's the hashtag? Oh, does it work now? Does the hashtag work? Yes, it works. And actually, what we're doing here is, to some extent, something that you would do in an actual RPG if you made an RPG in Pico 8. Something maybe, like there's two more things I want to discuss before we continue on and try to apply this concept to our uh, breakout game. First thing I want to I want to point out is that the properties here they themselves could become objects. There's no reason why they did this this couldn't be for example um what would you what would you do? For example, like you might do something like okay, um the strength and wisdom stuff like that these are the stats right so you maybe you could do gandalf dot stats equals um we're going to create a new object here and we're going to go stats dot strength so you kind of have like a bit of an organization going on not something i would recommend especially not in pico 8 because every time you address an object every time a dot you, you put a dot in here you waste another additional token so it's not so good to create like these crazy structures with this but generally there is an opportunity to do this just making sure that you know this another thing you could also do is i'm going to delete the stress um, for now another thing you can also do is uh, these can also be like um these properties could be also an array so, for example, you could have something like items or inventory, right? And then, oops, and then, you know, each Gandalf could have an inventory and then you would have like an array of the inventory and each, you know, different entries of, you know, the number would then indicate a, um, a, uh, a object that, that a character can have, for example. You could even have, you know, the inventory uh, and an array inventory array and the elements of that array would be then little objects indicating you know stats of the items that you have in your inventory you can you can you can go very very complex with with objects and arrays but there's a little detail i wanted to add to to point out to you guys <clears throat> so objects and arrays too by the way we haven't actually just had this problem yet but objects and arrays both behave differently a little bit differently than variables do, even though you address them as you would address variables. Let me exp let me show you what I mean. So let's say we want to have two Frodo's in our party, Frodo one and Frodo two, right? That may that sounds like a good idea. Or let's say you have to, we want to have two Gandalfs, Gandalf the white and Gan Gandalf the gray, right? So I'm gonna create a I'm gonna add a second Gandalf to our party. That seems like a good idea. I'm gonna run this. Okay, we have now two Gandalf the Greys, right? Cool. But, you know, one of the Gandalfs should be Gandalf the White. So I'm going to change this real quick. Um, so let's say 
I add this gun, this first Gandalf, that's going to be Gandalf the Grey. And now I'm going to change the name of Gandalf. Gandalf name equals Gandalf the White this time around. Okay, so I'm adding the one Gandalf, Gandalf the Grey. I'm changing the name to Gandalf the White. And I'm adding that different Gandalf with a different name uh, as a third member of our party. Let's run this. What? Now we have two Gandalf the White? How is it possible? It seems unintuitive because look, we first add the end of the gray, then we change the name and then we add a second Gandalf. And somehow when we change the name, it kind of like changed the name of the Gandalf that we added before we changed the name. Like it kind of like, uh, you know, ref reference back. It kind of like, um, how do you call it? Reverse engineered, like, um, retroactively change the name of, of, of the first Gandalf, of the, of the Gandalf you know, that is in the second slot of our party. Well, that's because objects exist independently of the names that you give them. That is kind of like a weird concept. So actually what, what, what is happening, there is just one Frodo and one Gandalf object in the computer. And what we did here when we added Gan the two Gandalfs to our party is we added a reference, a reference to that one Gandalf that exists. There's just one Gandalf in here. Um, we added a reference of Gandalf in the sec second party slot and in the third party slot. We added just a reference, you see. And so when we change one of the references, this Gandalf name that we gave it is also a reference. When we change something about that, um, you know, we, when we use the reference to change the object, all of the other objects that, that we kind of have, all of the other references point to the same object that has been changed. So basically there's just, what I'm saying is that there's just one Gandalf and it's Gandalf the White. There is no longer a Gandalf the Grey. There never, like, there was once Gandalf the Grey. Um, but if you want to have Gandalf the Grey and Gandalf the White, you will have to create a new object. So what we would have to do now is like basically go like, okay, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to call this Gandalf 2 and then, wait a minute, this is, this is what we need. Gandalf 2 or so, and then, you know, go through this entire process. And here where we saw equals and then the curly brackets, this line is when we actually create a new object. This is when in, inside the computer's memory, an object is being created and everything else that happens are all just references to this object. So um, just to, to reiterate, I'm going to call Gandalf the Grey 2 here. I'm going to call him white. And if you run this, we have one, indeed now one dollar, Gandalf the Grey, Gandalf the White. This is odd. This is really weird. And it's not how variables behave. Like if we just added strings. I'm going to do this. I'm going to add strings. So let's, I'm going to, I'm going to kill this. I'm going to, I'm going to say like, okay, I'm going to call Gandalf. It's just going to be a variable, right? Just let's say Gandalf is just a variable. I'm going to delete this or actually I'm going to do the same thing, but without objects, just with normal variables, like a string. Okay, so here we have a variable. We had the variable is called Gandalf the Grey. Uh, this will be an um, error, so I'm going to fix this real quick. Okay, so we have a variable called Gandalf the, uh, that has, that is called Gandalf, that has the content Gandalf the Grey. We add that in a second party slot. Then we change the variable to something else. And we add it again to the party slot. I'm going to run this. And now you can see we have two different names in the two different party slots. That's because when you do this assignment with a variable, the assignment doesn't, like the variable content doesn't exist independently of the variable name. So if you do an assignment there, you do something that, that we call, um, you assign it by value. You take whatever was in this variable and you make a copy of it and you put it wherever you want it, whenever the equal sign indicates. 
And so in this case, when we say like party, the second slot in party equals Gandalf, we take whatever was in Gandalf, make a copy of it and put it in a party slot. With objects, not so much. With objects, we, we say we pass it by reference. So we take the object that it was referencing and make also a reference to the same object without copying the contents of this object. And if this is kind of like blowing your mind, it's like, why is this so complicated? Don't worry about that. I'm just saying this because if you don't know about this, you can go pr get pretty far with objects until you suddenly get like really strange behavior and you don't know why this is happening. And if this ever happens, just list, remember that objects exist independently of the names they, they, they you give them. That a lot of variables can be pointing, can be referencing the same object. And it's very important for you, like if you want to have, make copies of objects, like if you have duplicates that do something if difference, then you actually have to create a new object and copy over the values of that object manually. Um, so yeah, like cool story. I actually didn't know that for a very long time. That's why I'm focusing on this so much. And I remember very, very well that I was, I'm, I'm not, not exactly sure what I was working on, but it was like this, I've been like stuck on this bug and it just, I couldn't fix this. And I was like, what the hell is happening? This, there's some magical stuff happening here until it, like it dropped like a penny where it was like, oh, that's what they meant with passing by reference. That's what, why it's called a pointer. That's why it's called an instance. Oh, <laughs> I was like, that was, that was fun and also scary. Hmm. So for all of you people who are like, okay, I didn't know all of this. There's two things I wanted to point out about objects. It, it, these are only important if you already know about objects um, in Pico 8. So Pico 8 doesn't really have classes. In other programming languages, before you even start creating objects, you have to define a class. And a class would basically define what kind of um, properties an object would have before you even create that object, kind of like a template for an object. Um, Pico 8 doesn't really have that. You can just do whatever you want. Uh, which is great, but also kind of problematic. For example, we had like the situation where we went through all of the party members and print all of the names. If you forget to give some of the party members a name, you will get into errors. So you just want to make sure that you create obje each object the same way. Another thing that uh, Pico 8 also doesn't have is, well, doesn't really have it, has it, but it's not really cool. Uh, we don't really have methods. Um, Methods are like these weird things where an object can also have like a function in it. So there's like a function that is executed within the object, so to speak. It's kind of weird and um, very useful, very useful. But Pico 8 doesn't really have this. Everything is just, you know, flat. You can have methods, um, but I found, I tried them and it, I found it a bit cumbersome. If you want to go for, for methods in Pico 8, you would have to research it yourself. I'm not going to do methods in Pico 8. Okay, so this was a, a bit of an introduction for you guys with objects. As you can see, so why did, did I introduce you to the objects? Well, as you can see, you can create like things um, that have properties to them and you can easily expand it. So if you decide that, oh, our, actually all of our pr RPG characters also need to have like Frodo, I don't know, they also need to have um, dexterity. We have forgot about dexterity. Why didn't we forget about this dexterity? You can just add it here, just like this. And you don't have to like create, you know, for each one of these entries, for each one of the properties, you don't have to create a spe extra specific uh, array for them anymore. Uh, if you, let me, I'm gonna load up our hero um, uh, thing, oops. So you might remember that we actually had this situation where we had to create a lot of arrays. So here, for example, with the bricks, there's like a lot of arrays that each describe the same brick. And we can now rewrite this with this new knowledge. We can re rewrite the bricks to be objects. And the advantage now is that whenever we decide, actually, we actually need to track about something else about the brick. For example, we have those bricks that are hardened. We can now go ahead and say like, we can also track the health points of a brick. We can just add like this property you know, to an object without having to create like a special you know, array for this and then making sure that whenever we create 
the, the bricks, we also have to create this array and we have to do remove bricks. We also have to remove this array, you know. Um, it's just something that's attached to the actual object and we can expand and, and reduce this object um, as, we, as we see fit. The same thing with the pills. Um, we can also do them as objects and that's something that actually coming up in the next episode. Um, I'm doing this now because as we go to and do multi-ball, we also want to have the balls to become objects. So we can add and remove them very quickly from an array. You will see that removing objects and adding them to an array is very comfortable and very nice because it's just one array you're manipulating. When we have, for example, here with the pills, when you have to remove a pill from those arrays, actually remove the pill from the arrays, we have to remove it from four arrays. And then if we have, you know, every time we, we say, oh, we need an additional property that, that those, those pills need to have, we would have to also, you know, make sure that it's, you know, this property is also dealt with in every single uh, part of our program where we actually change, manipulate the arrays of the pills. So yeah, that was a very long winded um, this description why we how um, how objects work and why we need them. And so in the next episode, I'm going to move on and we're going to actually apply them to some of the things that we already have first. And then we're going to move over and we're going to actually create um, create the multi ball um, stuff. Um, I just want to make sure because this is kind of like a lot of lot of things to swallow. So um, if you are not really sure what's what's happening, if you have any questions, if, if there's something that's not quite clear, I really want to make you sh make sure that you post it in the comment section so I can maybe give more specific answers to this. Otherwise, check out the next episode where you're going to actually take this wisdom and make it true. So how? See you next time, around, guys. Bye bye.